work on that. Let's go from one boob to another. All okay. right, guys? Wait so, new information in the Howard, Judge Howard Sims. All right. All right? Come on, baby. Here it is, baby. And we are going to make the call. We're going to make a call again right. to uh, no Internal points. Affairs. We're going to do it again today in a minute. Here we go. Irvin, I know you love this story because it just lets you rant and rave. Oh, and it just gets it. you boiled. Thinking your boy, your blood boiling. I'm going to have to do it manually. It anyway, right. he's going to work on her. He's, Darren's going to work on her boobs, and I'm going to tell you about this boob. <laughs> All right, here okay. we go. Shoot. Sims's career literally in the hands Deep of pleasure. the Judicial Qualifications Commission. Uh, if a Bibb County Sheriff's Office internal investigation confirms that the blood alcohol level of Sims was 0 0.083 on the night of September 22nd, then the deputies will talk to the county solicitor to determine whether criminal charges will be filed. Set to be complete by Monday, that's today, Monday, the results of that investigation will be released to the public after Sheriff Modena has a when? chance to review the findings, Chief Deputy, Deputy David Davis said. Whether or not he's arrested, Sims' career is likely in the hands of the State Judicial Qualifications that's Commission. Sims has notified the commission of his traffic stop and his plans to enter in an inpatient alcohol treatment facility. All investigations by the commission remain confidential unless the commission takes action against the judge. The commission is the only agency with the power to remove a judge. Commission Chairman John Allen, not to be mistaken with Joe Allen, Commission Chairman John Allen, a Superior Court judge from Columbus, said he can only remember three judges being removed from office in the past You're 20 years. Far, baby. Very rarely is a judge removed, Alan said. Well, that's not going to happen in this case. So, that's my man Irvin, okay, you, I'm going to send it right over to you. Today sometime, Medina is supposed to announce, Sheriff Medina is going to announce what Where? they're going to do. I don't know, it didn't say that, it just said Monday, it's going to be renounced. Later your, today, your, right? Your takes. It could be this morning. I don't if know. I had a bullshit flag, I'd be waving it. Right. <laughs> Gary would wave the BS okay. flag. Your take, Irvin. Okay, the fact of the matter is double standing. He should have been arrested immediately Agreed. by the first cop. Agreed. He was handed over. Then, now they're going to determine whether he was drunk. How long does it take? Uh, most of the time, he's right on the spot. That's bull crap. Exactly. And then, next, uh, as far as... Uh, the last point that was made with uh, with the John Allen from with, the, the uh, judge from the, Columbus yeah. and and the judge in Columbus yeah. and, and all of this. We got a call, guys. Decision, decision, all right, decision. we got a call. Get rid of him. Hello, caller. You're on the morning roast. Go for it. What's your name? Yeah, my name is Ed. What's up, Ed? Hey, Ed. How you doing? Yes, a uh, little little tidbit of information for you. Come on, buddy. A tidbit on. or a okay. titbit? <laughs> we're, 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 we're on bo boobs right now. Go ahead. Okay, there, 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 as far as the story goes, that, um... A clock talk! Said in its first statement that the breathalyzers are not that accurate. Yeah, that was ridiculous. Yeah, but they will be accurate for you, pal. I know. <laughs> and that's the only evidence they have. Right. They have no blood test, and all they have is the word of the... Exactly. People that serve us. 24 exactly. hours in the jail pen, that's what you would have received. Anybody else, that's a standard, zero tolerance. Now, let me ask you, that's the point I wanted to remember very quickly now that you're on the phone. Why is he going into rehab if he had no problem? Oh, well, this is... He has a problem. Time. He's going in rehab. Second yeah, time, you're right, Ed. Second, second time. time. Well, he's Absolutely. Been on the bench. We talked about that. And the first time they took him to his son's game, and the second time, they let him drive with an escort. Baloney! They let Baloney. him drive, period. It's well, here's a, here's a, here's Ed! A tidbit, which you might not know. Another tidbit. Uh, <laughs> yeah, see Jack Ellis oh. had to have a chauffeur. I remember that. Last term. I remember that. that. Because he got a DUI. I remember that. And he never I went to jail, that. right? I know. There's double mm -hmm. standards. There is. Yeah, well, you well, know, what, what's good for the Trip. goose is good for the gander. You're right. Like the police so, Ed, here, dude. Ed. This place is a hellhole when it comes to politics and the way people behave, the police are abusive. Okay, Ed, mm -hmm. have you ever got hey, a... Dude, remember, Irvin, you're living in Macon. It's well, we're going to change it finally. Thing. Ed, Ed, have you ever gotten a DUI? Yes. There you go. How many? Okay. Did you ever lose your license? And how much time have you done in the, the, the uh, jail cell for it? Uh, I had to do four days. <laughs>
<laughs> welcome back. <laughs> welcome back. How about that? Uh, welcome back to the Morning Roast with Anthony Harris, Gary right here, and hey. myself, Irving Martinez. So, Great morning, hot topics, uh, heated argument. Mm. Yes, but, uh, that's the way the show goes. For the public good, and that's really what we're trying to do. Right. We're trying here. to serve the public by informing them clearly, honestly, openly, and sometimes roughly <coughs> on the daily issues, daily topics that address and affect the soul. And also give our opinions. We'll yeah. make that clear. And, 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 you know, and this is opinionated, to too. And we're not to hear your opinion, which is something that we are asking you to do. Every day I'm talking to my chatters. I'm mm -hmm. saying give some input. The same thing with our viewers. Good morning, peaceful soul. And, Good morning. you know, uh, you know I was speaking to my chatters and my viewers, you know, take some responsibility to make you. sure mm -hmm. that you follow up with your friends. Have you been watching the show? Tell them. You know why you guys ought to be looking at this stuff because you could learn something and maybe have an effect and maybe want to do something about what the stuff that's going on in our country. Or you can learn to hate us. And you can learn to hate us. <laughs> but it, it doesn't matter. It's not about us. That's it's right. about you and it's about your needs and, and your ideas and having your input to make sure that the way this country is run is run the way you want it because you have a voice and that's another thing that I advocate is vote. Do not sit back and not vote. No longer mm -hmm. can this country go without a vote. That's why we have the Romneys. That's why we have the haters. That's why we have all this dissension in the government in the, in the, in the Congress and with the President. And that's why everybody's blaming everybody because you guys haven't made your voice loud enough to be heard. Loud. I loud. tell you, vote. We November there's an election. The next couple of years there'll be elections. Every election you need to go out and vote. That's my input. Well, sounds good. Okay. Or if you don't like the choices, don't vote. I'm all for that also. Oh, and, 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 and if and if no, no, you Jerry says it's bullshit. And if and if if yeah. you do vote and you don't like the choices you have, why the hell are you voting? Gary? But anyway, <laughs> before we go back to some local stuff, because I know now you want to vent on what oh, happened okay, last night. One, at my own press conference is going to be oh, completely no. different than I thought. But before we do that, I got another breaking story real quick. Uh, uh, Making? No, well, this is on a national level. We'll get back. But uh, mm -hmm. uh, apparently a cartoonist was found dead in his home. A uh, who? A cartoonist was found dead in his home. But the details are sketchy. Oh! Ooh, yeah, man. Okay. What a great story. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, and Derek, of course, yeah. we lost out because he had no clue. But anyway. Okay. Derek, stick with me, brother. Okay. we got to work together here. Okay. Anyway. Working my timing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you, you did it early. You thought the other thing was a joke, and the other thing wasn't the joke. Okay. But anyway. So anyway, Irvin, we're going to let you go with it now. Uh, it's 909, 48 seconds. You're watching The Morning Roast. Gary Ames behind the board. With virtual imagery photography studio, mm -hmm. Derek Barrett, the man yeah, in black. Yeah, Barrett. Irma Martinez, the shyster. We got Hani and Cassidy, the area. Servant. We're here right we there hanging out. Chef James. Bryant, back there. Looks like over he's there. got the hair of the dog going on over there. And of course, our gorgeous, beautiful, and awesome, Angie. beautiful little sister, Angie. Yeah. Edward, Edward's on. Your brother's on. It's yeah. about time. Edward, 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 Edward. Wait, what's up with that? Donnie Curry, what's up, Donnie? Great segment. <laughs> Donnie, I love you man. anyway. Mm -hmm. So, Irving. Yeah. We're after 9 o'clock. Yeah. Now's the time to address. The soap opera that was karaoke last night. By oh, my lord. You said you wanted to address this. Mm -hmm. Yes. I want your side before you let it, hold on. Before you start, because once you start, you're not gonna stop for a while. So let me give you this first. I want since you were there for it, and some of us were not around the whole thing, I want your truthful uh, it's always gonna be colorful, yes. which will always be that also, mm -hmm. account. I don't want you twisting, and I don't want you throwing things in to make things look good on your side if that's not the way it happened. Yep. So, that being said, I want to know exactly what happened from beginning to end. Because we, we, we have Donnie. Right. Oh, yes. Oh, Donnie's calling? No, we have Danny up to Yeah, yeah, well, we have, we're going to get to that. But I want, I want Irvin for you to say what happened and give a good little, you know, preface to it so these out-of-towners and all will know what the hell's going on. And we're not going to bore you too long with this because... You know, of course, you don't want to hear this, but you might because it is kind of a juicy, kind of exciting, yeah. sort of uh, uh, wild Take night. My jacket off. So, uh -oh. he's pulling no punches. Here goes Irvin. He's taking off his jacket. 
Roll, I'm going to sit back and let the sack talk for a while. Sleeves, roll, Derek roll. wasn't here last night, by the way, at karaoke. I was here. Okay. Uh, Urban was here. But when this happened, I missed part of it. I didn't see the early stuff that happened, apparently. I caught what happened later on. Anyway, go for it, Urban. Here Sum it up nicely. I had a roll. I promise. <laughs> And I had a large chat. Last night was karaoke night. Here at the Rosa Cafe. Great event. Danny F. and Davis. And that's actually his name. E-F-F-I-N. Uh, wonderful kid. He's in the band, too, being the band and all that. He was here last Morning night. After. And mm -hmm. I'm telling you, that kid, he's got a kicking karaoke night. If only more people knew about it, this place would be packed. Okay. Of course, the place was almost empty, which I attribute to Danny not promoting himself correctly. Because believe me, if Danny says it was a good show, people would show. But he's obviously too lazy to promote himself. So this place is a dead. So I've been promoting Danny. And everybody that shows up all day, I've been saying, come to karaoke. It's a great night. Danny's doing it. Blah, 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 blah. So I'm telling you, a lot of the people that showed, especially that doctor with the dog and his wife, they show up because I they show up and they know I'm going to be. So they weren't here at karaoke last they night. They were. They were. Not, not what I got early. here. They okay. got to go early. They well, got to go early. Okay. If you got to go early, you're not here for the whole time. Well, oh, whatever. But they show up now. Like I said, I went to see the Batman movie, but I left 10 minutes into it. I didn't see the Batman movie. Are you going to let me I'm sorry. I got to go. go. In, in, in I know. Talking. But let's tell the story. You what you said you weren't going to do, you're doing. Anyway, so I, I, I was promoting it and all that. Then on top of that, I opened up the show because there was nobody here to open. So Danny said, Irving, you're doing the first thing. And yes, I gave Danny my stuff early, my songs, and I did a first song that I love from the Traveling Wilburys. I had Mama D on stage with me and I kicked off the show. I felt great about it. And then I'm walking back and forth and any singing that went up, I was here right there in that chair and egging him on and encouraging him. Okay. Well, mm -hmm. Then I go outside, but before I go outside, this young man's pacing back and forth. Hey, can I help you? He said, "No, I, I I know you from somewhere," and we just said, "You know," and he's all smiling and he's like, "Oh, it's nice to meet you." I said, "Oh, thank you very much. I appreciate I appreciate you. You know, I appreciate that." And I told him and reminded him that um, you know um, who I am, and I said, "Hey, tomorrow, you know, this and that. You want to come on the show?" And I'm always inviting people on the show. And he said, sure, sure, I'll be here and all that. Next thing you know, I want to introduce you to my friend. Speaking so I him. said, I, I'm talking about it. I know, it. but as you go, Verbert, you stop and tell me. Down. Leave me alone, man. Well, tell the story. We don't want to know the how, hell up. how many people you invite this to this place. I want the story, or I'm going to tell it. Thank no. Hey, guys. Thank you. Well, hell, so, next you'll tell us what color underwear you wore and how much Anyway, you anyway, oh, as I go along. Edward, do you deal with this with your brother when y'all were growing up? Anyway, go. <laughs> so, back again to my story. I start to... He introduces me to the guy. Loud! He introduces me to the guy. And the guy is a tall, young black man who works with inner city youth. He works with the police department. That was the connection that he was talking about last night. And so, we hit it off. And here's this big, giant, gentle bear who had a beautiful smile on his face, and we're having great conversation about what's going on. You walk around saying that you're Christian, or whatever it is. You go to Israel, and all you did was bring back the hate. That's all you did, was bring back the horrible spirit of hate. And Judy, you're a joker. Stop it. Don't listen to him. You're going to get yourself killed. Uh, don't and don't, 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 don't make comments. Yeah. I mean, come on, don't make comments. You're, you're a two-faced. You tell me that you like me, and now you're saying I'm mayhem. You don't even know the story. Did you bother to talk to me about it? Who's and all the other bloggers and Facebook people. Stop making comments. Stop hating on me. You guys think I'm crazy. No wonder I'm crazy. You guys are driving me crazy. And I can't <laughs> you know? stop telling you that. You, most of the part, what happened with the police was the police to beat the shit out of me and I was thrown in jail. Then, yeah, I broke the guy's windshield because I was going crazy. I had to put myself in a mental institution. I've never been in jail in my life until I got to Macon. You know, why is that? 
44 years, I'm doing well, and I come to make it, and I go crazy. It's that Think Indian about curse, that. Right, David? You, you yourselves know that shit. The waters, the but yet, curse. now you want to blame me. You call me Howie Ansel and the clown. Howie Ansel is mentally ill. Instead of criticizing you, you should be helping him. You're all a bunch of haters. That's the problem with this city. God is never going to bless this city, ever. It's and I curse this city right fun. now for what it does. I curse this city for what it's doing. And I curse it because it needs a curse. You know, you guys are completely irrational, completely uncaring, completely uncaring. I'm not saying everybody. I'm saying the people that are in power, they ought to be out of here. Edward, hey, God your brother, you Irvin, your brother asks that Danny was not knocking your hat off. Your brother asks because he likes you, Irv. He's also just plain angry at you. You help. No, people. he doesn't like me. No, brother. I don't know where you're getting that from. No, no, he's asking you. Don't no, he brother. doesn't like me. Jeez, he doesn't like me. Okay. Hello. Well, he was asking. All right. Anyway, yeah. well, you do have some. You do yeah, have some Derek speak. Ultimate, yeah. yeah, ultimate vampire says, "I'll protect you, Irv. I'll go all, all psycho on them uh, haters." Get it, get yeah. down here, please. Damn right. protection. And Fergus says, "Because Canadian women roll like that." Oh well, damn right. Yeah. It says ultimate vampire, and the then hosers. Yeah. This yeah. place is a hell. I swear. Anyway, <laughs> so that that is the night that we had at karaoke. That is the night. It was fun, but besides all that, there was some good times. So I've been you coming know. to karaoke here. This is Gary, y'all. Go, Gary. I've mm -hmm. been coming to karaoke here for a couple of months. Uh huh. And we've not had any fights. No, no, no. no. This was the first. It, well, roasted in general, like Chris has said, us only had three fights. I, you know, and it's I don't, been around I a year, know and, and guys, some aren't even fights. Okay, but the behavior last night, as they were getting asked to leave, where, where they were the showed their true colors. The, right. I did, I, I did mean, see their were, behavior. They were yeah. screaming the N word at the top of their yeah. lungs. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. And who? And a that's nigger. I'm not going to be afraid to say it because I think you're not going to say it. Screaming at a crowd of white guys to make no sense to me. It's, yeah, know, always screaming nigger. They were. The guys. Yeah, your friends. friends. The friends. The bodyguards. And the they didn't say your friends. Your friends. Everybody's my goddamn friend. Okay. They were your bodyguards. Anyway, Irvin, <laughs> what, I'm glad you got your story out. And we wanted you to get See, that out. Everybody blames me. They were I didn't blame God. you. I'm not blaming God. you. I wanted the complete story because I was not there for part of it. These guys were nice guys, as far as I thought. I don't read people that start to read their brain whether they're guys. dangerous or not. It's, it's, and they would not have been in danger of Danny didn't go on. They want to fight. I don't know. They, nice guys. Did, they and Danny started that fight. Period. The end. Danny he was the have. aggressor. I was Danny was the predator. Danny was the god that did it all. He might Period. have. I he didn't. Have. He might have. He might have. I wasn't there. I'm just saying. Huh? Right. He might have started it. Well, you well, ask Mama, Mama D. Ask Mama D. Okay. I will. All right. Mm. Well, you better. I'm not taking sides on that. Believe me. I just know. I just know. What I told you yesterday, Irvin, regardless of who's in the right and wrong, don't just take the people off the street so easily. I mean... You said you just met these well, guys, these and you judge them. You judge them in ten minutes, saying they're nice guys. Well, and you believe everything they say. They're a cop. Okay, they got to be cop. They're the dead ones. They're what? Act on. These are guys that are young, right? These Do you believe they were cops? Do you believe they were cops? I believe that the guy was. Uh, uh, I didn't say he was a cop. No, he said he was. He no, was telling Nick he was. I once with inner city you. That's okay. What he does. And the other short guy was telling Nick he was nah, a cop. Whatever. So yeah. he was probably lying. Of and course. My point is being they might have been lying to you about stuff. So why trust people so easily, Irving? You know that's my point. You know I'm not well, saying I'll, I'll own up to that. You know you're right. Don't trust people so easily. Mm -hmm. But uh, Derek, go ahead. Speaking speaking of drama, and I do mean okay. drama. Derek, back with the sound. It was 31 years ago this month, actually, that uh, the Who Done It episode of Dallas aired on CBS, resolving who shot J.R. Cliffhanger from the previous season. I, I don't remember who it was. Do you? I do. I do. In fact, I should have picked that up. Uh, the, the, the backstabbing that went on there, yeah. I should have known what I was getting into. Yeah. I don't remember who did it. Who is who? Uh, Kristen? Oh yes, it was. Kristen. It was revealed to be Kristen I Shepherd. I can't remember the actress who played Kristen. It was uh, played by Mary Crosby. Bing Crosby's the oh, daughter. Okay, I remember yeah. Kristen though. That's yeah, the I, I actually knew who she was too. Of course, um, there was. I, I remember that day. They actually, I think WRBL. There was a a, team, uh, a, a channel out of town. I think somewhere like Columbus or 
somewhere like that, Channel 3, uh, WRBL, they had a contest of whoever knew who JR's uh, killer was, they would win a color TV. But unfortunately, I was underage. I had been 16 years old to win, and I was like uh, 12, 13, or something like that. Wow. And I couldn't, you know, I couldn't participate. But Kristen Shepard was, uh, who was... Who shot JR? Who shot JR. JR's sister-in-law, Sue Ellen's sister. And then shortly after that, the debacle of Bobby in the shower happened. Yeah, and then... Which is... And somehow Kristen somehow, somehow mysteriously found dead in a pool, which, you know... Near the balcony at Jr.'s room. Ta -da! Dun, dun, dun. Oh yeah, yeah. But anyway, because so he basically killed it, but just for getting back and shooting. Which uh, you know, if I got shot, I probably would be too. Because basically, every all the people who wanted to shoot him wanted for basically for oh, financial. Oh, he was a master, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They wanted to shoot him just basically for um, business reasons and stuff. You know, you ruined my career. I should kill you. I should right, kill you. Then right. basically, Kristen shot basically shot Jason because. Uh, he did the Mari Povich move, like, you got me pregnant, so you oh. all the father with your 10-gallon hat. Pow, 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 and that's what happened, you know. That's it. Baby mama drama, way back then. So. Baby mama drama. And that happened so, 31 years 31 ago. 31 years month. ago, this month. All yes. right. Well, let's just kind of move on to our next story viewers. here. Uh, <laughs> I should have watched that show better because I would have realized what the hell I was getting myself into moving into a wretched place. Right, right. Mm-hmm. Uh -huh. Well, I love my city of Macon, though. No matter what, I'm going to fight for a time. It's a beautiful well, you can, place. Well, you can catch all those shows on... Uh, when I curse it, I'm just like cursing it, but I'm really trying to bless Well, because you want it better. We all we all want it better for the city, yes. and we realize just how screwed up it is. Place because the wrong people, people are running it. Even though it's just it. Even though it's The wrong hated. people are running it, and people that don't know what they're doing. That's the problem. It's, you don't blame the city. And, just like gun control, you don't blame the gun. Gun, gun, gun control. Okay. Is that how you agree? Well, agree on that. You agree. I always You don't that. blame the gun. You blame the person holding the gun. The city. You don't blame the city. You blame the people that you know, are holding the guys like Gary Ballard and all that are honorable people. I don't know who the hell Gary Ballard is gun, you know, right away they hear something, they're like, you know, brown nosing. I mean, you don't even know the story, Gary, and yet I'm just well, that, pointing You're right. You're right about that. When people, you know, when on, people, when people give their two cents and they, they weren't here. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, Gary, uh, Vic Stanley wasn't so bad. I mean, his comment wasn't offensive. But I'm telling you. So, I mean, so you were fired from calling you an idiot? No, I mean, you know, okay. he's not a bad guy, actually. Well, I know, he's but, not, but you not, railed on him you know. before. You railed on him. Yeah, yeah. I, I actually love Vic. I actually, I, I think he's brilliant. And, and, wow. and Tim as well. It's just that they don't understand. They jump the gun on a lot of things that I do. Everybody misreads me, and then when it's in their face, Why do you think that truth, is, they Urban? refuse to believe it. Why do you think? Do, I don't do you know. see? I have no do, clue. do you think it has something to do with the way you jump around so much? Well, maybe. I need my mental illness. They they yeah. take that. They're like you. Then you know they're expendable. You know they you know, I'm expendable. Uh, they think, and my mental illness was exacerbated by the abuse that I got from the cops here in Macon. I was fine in New York. Yeah. And I'm fine. I would see. Uh, you know, I used to run the New York Hilton uh, housekeeping. I used to run the the the, the uh, Omni Park Central. I used to run St. Barnabas Hospital, where I led almost 1,500 employees. I was in charge of everything. I had seven businesses. It's the, my mental illness started when I got married, and my, it was a terrible experience <laughs> as far as emotionally, spiritually, and all of that. And that's where it started a few years ago. Then it exacerbated itself when I moved here, and I had to deal with moving na now, going through a terrible divorce. Then I had already an aneurysm on my aorta. I had a heart attack. I've been positive for 35 years, and that is as I stopped taking medicine. I wanted to be younger. I said, great. Well, do you want to be my, you know, so-called bodyguard? And we laughed about it. I said, he said, sure. I was, you know, I said, but I can't pay. He's like, no problem, no problem. I said, great. Well, consider yourself my bodyguard. And then we were kidding. I mean, uh, and at the same time, I was like, hey, you want to be? Uh, I'll probably need it. So that happened. And immediately he took on the role. And he was serious about it. So then Danny comes over. And I'm sitting with Mama D. I'm sitting with the guys. We're having a conversation about inner city youth. I got another friend of mine sitting here. I got the friend of our bike sitting here. And I had Tom Ellington who was around. City and all council member. City council member. And, and left. Uh, I don't know when he left. I think he saw everything happen. So what happened? Danny comes over. And he starts railing on the guy. 
why I called you five times, blah, 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 you need to be listening, and the guy is ready to pounce on him, and I'm going, dude, this is how Danny is, don't worry about it, don't take it personal, and then Danny's walking away and knocks my hat off, so the, and he says, oh, you need to stop, blah, 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 and he starts railing on me, and I said, all right, I left it alive, I said, you're well here having a conversation, he didn't hear you, I didn't hear you, so Danny then goes inside, and the guy gets up, I go, go, go sing your heart out, kid. Don't worry about it. The guy gets up, but I could see he was furious. I go, you all right? You all right? No problem. And he went in, and everything happened. Comes inside. Come to... Next thing you know, I see them all coming out. Nick is coming out. They okay, go, well, wait, 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 wait. I'm no, you didn't see the inside. Not. Well, I have to take over what I saw. If you didn't see inside, Urban, I don't want you telling what you think you saw. Let me take over here, because you just said you came right, in, right? right? Okay, so now this is where I pick it up. I'm hanging out at a friend of ours, Danny, not Danny Davis that runs karaoke. He comes in. He goes by the uh, karaoke name uh, White Rabbit. He comes in to do the Tool song, and I'm out. I thought it was Captain uh, Captain Danny. Oh, he changed his name. Well, no, no. This is a different guy. This is Danny, the karaoke singer. This is what he goes by. He comes in to sing Tool. I'm outside hanging out talking, and you know I hear the Tool song begin, whatever, and. I'm hearing no singing. I'm thinking, wait a minute, by now there should be some singing going on. What's wrong? I walk in here. As I walk in from the front door, I look to the back. I'm seeing Danny and this pretty big black guy mm -hmm. at each other's face right at the edge of the stage here, which is like a foot or two from Urban right now. And they're in each other's face. And the black guy pushed Danny, and Danny pushes the guy back. Mm -hmm. Well, at this point, Nick, the owner, and a few other people come up and are trying to separate things and break things up. And, uh, uh, the guy then reaches for Danny, and, and there's a couple people between Danny and this guy, and the guy eventually gets a hold of Danny's arm, and he pulls his arm, and he starts twisting Danny's arm, and Danny's like going with the roll. He's rolling with it, you know, you know, like they teach you. To keep mm -hmm. something from breaking, you roll with it. Keep okay. It from breaking or whatever. So he rolls with it, and eventually they get the guy off of Danny's arm. Well, mm -hmm. uh, they're, they're trying to keep him separated. At this point, it's, you know, I've, I've kind of run or walked briskly toward the back. Uh, Chris mm -hmm. has come from behind the bar, the guy that works at the bar. Chris has come out from there. He's rushed over there. Uh, 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 Brett, who was doing the lights, jumps up, rushes over. Uh, Lindsay, who just came in, stopped by a minute ago, she came and runs over, the sole girl that comes over. And basically, they're trying to break things up. Well, the black guy had his other friend who comes over, and then he jumps in the middle, and they have... We have two people separating that guy. We have the other two or three on the other guy. Lindsay's trying to be the peacekeeper, you know, the, the love hippie chick that, that she is. And um, the guy, next thing you know, he reaches, grabs Danny, picks him up, grabs him under the crotch like he's about to body slam him, WWE style. And this mm -hmm. is right here, right next to Urban's spot right here. Well, he tries to pick him up the first time, and I guess Nick and some other guys were holding the guy's arm saying, no, no, what do you do, what do you do? So he... The weight of, of them pressing down on the guy's arms kept him from picking Danny up. I, from my angle, I'd seen him try it about two or three times, and he couldn't get Danny up. Well, finally, he gets Danny up, and he gets him up, and he does this basically a standard wrestling body slam right there. But, of course, it looked standard fake wrestling body slam. It was like, Dan, I think Danny's feet hit first, you know, his, his feet took the impact, then his butt and his back hit the ground, and Danny got him fine, he wasn't hurt, so that's why I think he was never really hurt by the slam. So he gets up, well, Brett, the guy who runs lights, he comes, and he's got the other guy, the shorter black guy, in a headlock, and the guy's all screaming, let me go, man, let me go, man, I'm a cop, I'm a cop, I'm a cop, blah, blah, blah. And then the next thing you know, they're, they're screaming, and then Nick's screaming back at the guy, if you're a cop, show me, show me your badge, show me your badge. And so slowly we start pushing the guys out of the place, out to the outside area, and, um, and they get outside, and of course some more words are exchanged. Mm. So, now Irvin, pick it up because you're outside to see from now on. I wanted to cover inside. Go. So then I see them coming out, and I saw them going, no, what the hell's going on here? Stop, stop, stop. And I'm looking at the two guys, and I'm saying, don't do this, don't do this, don't do this. That's the owner, that's the owner, that's the owner. Then Nick starts saying, what the f are you bringing here? What is wrong with you? I'm like, Nick, I didn't do anything. Nick did not listen to one word I had to say. Danny's saying, he brought him here, he brought him here. I didn't bring him here. Danny's a liar. So I'm like, I don't get this. Nick's listening to Danny, but he's not listening to me. 
and Nick never gave me one minute to hear me out till this moment, Nick Nuts and all the story. And I'm telling him, Nick, I didn't do this. I don't understand what you're talking about. I tried to avoid this from happening. What is going on here? And I told the guys, finally, the young kid, when he's taking his shirt off and ready to go, I, I said, no, you're not doing this. And I looked at the big guy and I said, brother, you need to go. Please go. And he listened to me and he left. And they left. And then afterwards, Nick had pissed off at me because he thought I brought him there. And I started that brawl. It was Danny that started that brawl. It was Danny who disrespected the guy. It was Danny who disrespected me. It was Danny who caused the fight. Danny is the one to blame. And I hope that he is punished by not allowing him to do his show here a couple of days. Because what Danny did was not bring him business. The place was empty. The place had no people here. There was no money. Really, Nick lost a lot of money yesterday. Well, only Nick can vouch for and, that. And you I'm can't say that. You can't say well, that. Like, you haven't seen the books, so. Well, whatever. You, but you, 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 can't, you can't throw stuff out many people there. at the bar. All right. Right. But, but that doesn't mean you can have, one, means you can have one guy at the bar who spent 300 bucks. Or, you well, know, no, whatever. Okay. I doubt you it. You can't say what they paid on. I know, but you have got to assumptions. We're not going to get into what money was. The point is, all right, he did not bring him anything from mayhem. He did not, and he disrespected Nick because he caused a problem. Instead of him looking to go down, Danny's egging the guy on all the way to the freaking door. He said, oh, F you and this okay. and that, blah, blah, blah. Danny wasn't our peacemaker. Question. Danny was the aggressor. He was the predator. He was the one that caused it all to happen. Question, Irvin, if I may. And you were out there for this, and I wasn't, and that's why I'm asking you this, because you were there. No respect. The thing, the thing about it now, let me get this, because this is what I heard from outside people that were sitting at the table. The thing about it is, first of all, the guy didn't really know the sort of uh, friendship or sort of... Uh, no, oh, listen, let me finish. The sort of, uh, uh, of, of relationship. Give me a name. The, the big black guy, your bodyguard. He didn't know that you... He's new to the place. He didn't know that you and Danny are kind of acquaintances and friends. Danny's no, 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 okay. That's fine. But, but what I'm getting at, let me say, is... Danny, I'm sure, came to flip your hat off in a joking way. He did it three times. Okay, I wasn't yelled at me. I wasn't there. For no fucking reason. Well, my point being is this guy maybe thought that he was being a bully when actually Danny looked at you as like a friend that he could do that with. This guy okay. knows I'm running for a co by okay. big county commissioner. This but, guy's looking at me like, oh, you know, why thing, are you Irvin? disrespecting this guy? Right, okay, and I understand that. He was that. pissed off. Well, I don't, Anybody would. And, and if you were mad, then Danny was wrong to flip your hat off. But Danny, I think, just thought, Danny just thought, he, he, Danny thought he could probably just do that because you, no, he's not too tight that. like that. Well, that's fine. I never gave Danny now, listen, that license. But now he this took is, it upon himself this is to the do next, that shit. But this is the next point. I respect that. Oh, talk this, about this. Let me ask you, okay? We know what you feel. You can go back to it. Now, then I heard from other people sitting at that table with you that, and again, I'm sorry this sounds like high school off the comments. I know this is like honey boo boo crap. But anyway, oh, anyway, listen, my point is I heard people say that, that the guy looked at you and said, that's pretty messed up for him to do that. Oh. You want me to do something about it. Did he say that to you? The yes. big black guy? And did you then say, Yes, go do something. No, don't worry about it. What did you say? No. What did I you said, say to I said, leave it alone. Okay. I said, it's okay. Okay, exactly. But remember, uh -huh. remember, I don't play. That's well, it. Okay. All right? So, I, I want to make sure yeah. that... Well, you're gonna be, that's the I'm thing. serious. That's okay, the let thing. me finish. Well, that, well, in other words, if you're my bodyguard, right. you better do your job. Well, yeah, but you better pay the guy if he's doing it for no, free. No, no, I don't got to do nothing. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not going to do it body for nothing. Except my own and my family. I wasn't hanging on to fight Danny. As a matter of fact, I stopped him a couple of times. Because he was ready okay. to punch Danny okay. out the moment that he no. knocked my hat off the first time. Okay, well, let's go. I no. just said if you're well, a bodyguard, be serious. I, I want to be respectful. I want your story. Now, let's go. Danny Davis posts about 10 hours ago on Facebook. This is the host of karaoke. He posts, and, and this was right after these guys were kicked out of.